Hello, hello. This is Point of View with Shirley Polk. It's a wonderful day. I am so thankful to God for everything that he's done, everything that he's doing. Today we're talking about moving forward, dealing with grief. And I've done one broadcast for today, dealing with grief. And this is the other one, dealing with grief. And our family is going through a grief period right now because our, our youngest brother, Louis, suddenly died last month on the 16th of April in this year 2018 and we're still dealing with this and this gives us some pointers gives us the way that we're supposed to be dealing and I really really like this because it tells it just like it is and it's open and it's understandable and so I want to share it with you moving forward dealing with grief moving forward dealing with grief now, grieving the death of a loved one is an individual process. Some caregivers initially feel numb and disoriented, then endure pangs, P-A-N-G-S, of yearning for the person who has died. Others feel anxious and have trouble sleeping, perhaps dwelling on old arguments or words they wish they had expressed. Sudden outbursts of tears are common in grief triggered by memories or reminders of the loved one. Been there, done that. So even those who are confident that their loved one is with the Lord struggle with sadness over there and they use loss here. And I don't, I try my best to stay away from the word loss because I don't think that it's a loss. I, I just don't like to look at it like that because God knows where they are and they're not lost. Now, when we say uh, that uh, they chose not to be saved, then we say they're lost. Okay, we understand that, that they're not going to heaven. So that means that they've lost their chance of going into heaven. So they will uh, stay in, uh, be in hell eternally. Okay, but a loss, even those who are confident that a loved one is with the Lord, they struggle with the sadness over, and the author here says loss. And this is found in FocusOnTheFamily.com. FocusOnTheFamily.com. So not all people grieve the same way or for the same length of time, but dealing with grief is essential in order to come to terms with the loss of your loved one and move on with your life. To do that, you need to be honest in your grieving and ask God, the tough questions that help us mature and we can uh, read Lamentations the third chapter now bereavement differs okay bereavement differs the circumstances of your elders death can affect your grief if a loved one suffered with a long illness death is often considered a blessing now for the families of Alzheimer's patients some say Alzheimer's some say Alzheimer's I say Alzheimer's most of the time okay for the families of Alzheimer's patients, mourning begins with the onset of the disease long before death occurs. Now, because of the time spent in anticipating death, the kind of bereavement differs from the intense grief over someone who dies following a brief illness or a surgery or an accident, okay? So this kind of bereavement, like the Alzheimer's, uh, that morning begins on the onset of the disease itself, okay? And it differs from if someone has uh, died of a short illness or a surgery or an accident or like my brother did just suddenly and they say it was of a cardiac arrest, a heart attack, all right? And even Danny, the same thing. Mama, the same thing. Daddy, the same thing, all right? So over time... The intensity of your grief will likely subside, but do not try to rush the grieving process. This is very important. Do not try to rush the grieving process and do not expect your feelings and emotions to be like anyone else's. Now, God made you unique and your grieving process will be a personal journey. And we have to look at it like this. It's a personal journey. Listen to me and understand this. And this article is right on point with my thinking. This is Point of View with Shirley Polk, 214-403-7563. Okay, but keep in mind 
that the weight of grief is lighter when shared. Support from others can help you handle the aftermath of your loss. God always offers comfort in times of bereavement. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. John 14 verse 18. That is the King James Version. Now we're talking about coping with or after the funeral. So when the funeral is a memory and your relatives and friends have returned to their busy lives, you may wonder how you are going to cope. Now if grief threatens to overwhelm you, try some saying with the Psalms, okay? My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. That's Psalm 119 and verse 28 in the New International Version of the Bible, okay? In that translation. Now cling to God's promises as you work through your grief. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. That's Isaiah, the 40th chapter in the 29th verse, and that's the New King James Version. Okay, now, but how does a person get over the death of a loved one? How long after a loss should one still be grieving? It is generally agreed that there are four tasks of mourning, T-A-S-K-S. Every bereaved person must accomplish to be able to effectively deal with the death of a loved one. Now, Accept the reality of the loss. Experience the pain of grief. Adjust to an environment in which the deceased is missing. Take the emotional energy you would have spent on the one who died and reinvest it in another relationship. Next, accepting the loss. The first task, accepting the reality of the loss, involves overcoming the natural denial response and realizing that the person is physically dead. We must realize that the person is physically dead. That's accepting the reality of the loss. And they use the word loss here. I didn't write this article, so I'm going to read it as they wrote it, okay? And this is FocusOnTheFamily.com. Now, this can be facilitated by viewing the body after death, attending funeral and burial services, and visiting the place where the body is laid to rest. In addition, talking about the deceased person or the circumstances surrounding the, the death can be very helpful. Now, it is necessary to grieve the physical finality of loss or, or losing a loved one and come to grips with the fact that you will not see that person again in this life. And I add it unless you dream about the person, okay? Now, it is necessary, I repeat, to grieve the physical finality of losing a loved one and come to grips with the fact that you will not see that person again in this life. But the spiritual life goes on. If your loved one was a professing Christian, not only will you see him or her again in the life to come, but he or she is now in an immeasurably better place in the Lord's presence with no more pain or fear or sorrow. No more pain or fear or sorrow. Now this is true for all who die in the Lord. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And that's Revelation 21st chapter 4 through the 5th verses. And that's the New King James International Version. Now, therefore, we mourn for ourselves, not for our Christian loved ones. They are where we yearn to be. And we know that we long to be with them. They're saying that we're supposed to... Uh, 
grieve for ourselves, but we know that we are uh, sad because they have gone on before us and they have transitioned into eternity. And it's saying that we will not see them on this side physically, be able to fellowship with them on this side, be able to be in their company on this side again, unless we dream about them. And then we know how the dreams go. They don't last forever. All right. Experience the pain. The second task, experiencing the pain of grief, also confronts the denial that is so common in grieving persons. Many people try to avoid pain by bottling up their emotions or rejecting the feelings they are having. Many people do that. So they may avoid places and circumstances that remind them of their loved ones. They may try to take shortcuts through the grieving process, not admitting to the feelings of anger or denial that usually exist. So, however, the only way to move through grief is to move through it. The only way, and I like this so much, to move through grief is to move through it. Okay? It is impossible to escape the pain associated with mourning. M O U. R-N-I-N-G. The person who avoids grieving will eventually suffer from, from some form of depression or even physical problems. So fully experiencing the pain, most often through tears, provides relief. Jesus wept over the loss of his friend Lazarus, even though he knew he was about to raise him from the dead, we too have permission to weep. We have permission to weep. And it's not fair for a person to tell you not to weep, not to grieve, not to be sad, because those are emotions that God gave us for these times in our lives for release and relief, okay, to get that those emotions out through tears or through however you express your emotions, but we all experience pain in this life. And the only thing worse, I repeat, than the pain of losing a loved one is the pain of never loving or being loved in the first place. So in a way, the pain of grief is a gift to us because it is evidence of the presence of love. And I said, I repeat, because I did it this morning and didn't take okay so i only had like four seconds i think of it so I'm, I'm doing it again jesus wept this is what i'm repeating over the loss of his friend lazarus even though he knew he was about to raise him from the dead we too have permission to weep okay now adjusting there's another step the third task adjusting to an environment in which the deceased is missing requires the grieving individual to assume some of the social roles performed by the deceased or to find others who will. For example, a grieving spouse may need help with household chores and cooking. Someone who never learned to drive must either learn how to drive or find other forms of transportation. The alternative is social withdrawal and sitting home alone and we definitely don't want to start that don't want to do that okay don't withdraw all right don't withdraw all right a person who dreads coming home to an empty house may find comfort in adopting a pet how about that a friendly pet so the final task is taking the emotional energy you would have spent on the one who died and reinvesting it in another relationship or relationships and it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship it could just be a, a friendly relationship or even you know, with your family you know spend more time with your family however you can get through this because in order to get through the grief you must go through it I like that okay so many people feel disloyal or unfaithful if they withdraw emotionally from their deceased loved one but the goal is not to forget the person who has died it is to finally reach the point where you can remember your loved one without experiencing disabling grief 
all right so some find it impossible to invest in new relationships because they are unwilling to take the risk of feeling another loss and I know how that feels I know how that feels others were so immersed in caregiving now that their loved one has died they are not sure what to do still investing time in friendships is, is important for many reasons and I remember when Elder Davis transitioned after he transitioned and it was oh gosh let me see about two months because you know in, in uh, caring for him and attending to him I I would do what was necessary to take care of myself you know I did my my hygiene and everything daily I did everything I needed to do but I just couldn't just like uh, just take my time and just like you know sometimes you like to just uh, just soak in the tub or just spend a lot of time under the shower and let the water run on you know I couldn't do that for some years okay so after that about two months after that I was getting ready to go to uh, um, a function and so I was in the tub and then he came to me and said the, the Lord spoke to me and I know it was God the Spirit of God spoke to me and said you can stay in here as long as you want to you don't have to rush you don't have anybody to see after but you and you can stay in here as long as you want to I stayed in that tub and when the water would get cool I would turn the hot water back on and I just lay there and you know how you, your skin gets a little uh, is it wrinkly or a little uh, whatever you know when, when you stay in the water a long time I was just like that because I realized it took me two months to realize it, that you don't have to rush anymore you can take your time it's only you now you have been released from those duties and so since then I've been taking my time yet doing the Lord's will and taking care of myself and not getting in a rush and a frenzy over this and that and the other I've been doing my best to not do that okay now so I understand this so uh, it says that others were so immersed in caregiving and this is what I'm talking about that now that the loved one has died they are not sure what to do and it was like that with me even though I was doing things doing things but then I realized you can take your time now you can take your time relax take your time because God has taken him and he is in his care now and even though he was physical you understand what I'm saying God always cares for us but God had taken him and taken him into eternity and so now it's your time and I thank God for that okay so still investing time in friendships is important for many reasons old friends can re uh, reminisce about your loved one and also give you encouragement and permission to rebuild your life new friendships allow you to uh, be again the person with the future okay not just a widow widower or a survivor for some getting involved in a volunteer ministry provides structure and a sense of purpose uh, and built-in companionship others swap phone numbers with new friends from grief recovery groups do not feel like you have to hurry to this stage okay do not feel like you have to hurry to this last stage which is taking the emotional energy with you have spent on the one who died and reinvested don't worry about hurrying through this okay if attending a light-hearted party seems incongruous and uh, incongruous whichever I, st I stumble over that word in the first webcast that was really not recording okay now if attending a light-hearted party seems incongruous with your current state of mind perhaps having coffee and conversation with a good friend would be a refreshing change of pace 
so many surviving spouses enjoy focusing more time and energy on children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. I don't have any great-grandchildren yet, okay, but my grandchildren, and I thank God for them and my children, okay, and my brothers and sisters and all the people that are in my life. I thank God. I thank God. So do not rush into making major decisions or changes that would all add stress to your life. Give yourself time and space to grieve. If at all possible, do not move for at least one year. You might benefit from setting aside an hour every day or two to work on grieving, especially if your loved one's death was recent. To do this, turn to caring family members or friends for support. Read a good devotional book such as Streams in the Desert or Quiet Moments for Caregivers. And then you may also want to look in a Bible concordance for words like comfort and hope. So as you look up the verses, meditate on each one and record it in a prayer journal. Allow God's healing words to sink in. Psalm 94, 19 tells us, in the multitude of my anxieties within, your comforts delight my soul. And that's the New King James Version. The J. William Ward in Grief Counseling and Grief Therapy, a handbook for mental health for a mental health practitioner. And this is in focusonthefamily.com. Enjoy the remainder of your day. This is a day that God has made, and I'm rejoicing, and I'm glad in this day. Enjoy!